Good day, everyone. So this is a recorded discussion of the topic for midterm. So we have four topics here. We have the warm-up or conditioning exercises for topic number one, lesson two for aerobic exercises, lesson three for human skeleton, and lesson number four for anatomical movements. But first, let's take up lesson number one, which is the warm-up or conditioning exercises. So for prelim topic, we also discuss your uh, Aristotle progression of exercise from basic complex and cool down. And most of the uh, lessons or topics for prelim is a continuation for midterm topic. So we have here some features or sections for the warm up. So the warm-up should include a stretching and exercises of moderate intensity that cause sweating and increase in muscle temperature. Another important practice to follow is an exercise program is to gradually start the exercise session and gradually taper off at the end. So in terms of the warm-up, kailangan, ang result niya ay, uh, it's either pinagpapawisan ka, hinihingal ka, napapagod, but uh, that would not... Uh, cause you too much fatigue. Okay, basta kaya pang i-handle ng katawan ang pagod, that would be um, okay or legal. So that would be the uh, some factors or some results of doing a warm-up. So kailangan medyo intense or medyo um, the level of difficulty ay hindi naman masyadong mababa at hindi naman masyadong mataas. Yung kayang-kaya lang ng katawan. So in your uh, Aristotle progression of exercise, the most important part that we should not forget before or during a play, and even for the after the play, kasi ang, ang major uh, function natin o yung pinaka kinukuha na dapat natin na result would be on the finals or after the play, yun yung long term na kailangan natin gamitin. For example, in terms of the warm-up, if a person or if an athlete uh, take it seriously doing her or his warm-up uh, before or during the play, okay, uh, nalilesen yung part na pwede magkaroon ng fracture of the bones uh, that would be the most uh, uh, painful or uh, highest accident na pwede mangyari. And the lowest form of accident naman, ang pinakakomon is the muscle cramps. Ano pa, uh, go for uh, muscle tissues, yung pagkapunit niyan, kung hindi proper yung train na ginagawa. That's why the warm-up is a very important factor to be considered before, uh, during, and after the play. Especially for the after the play, kasi yung long run na tinatawag natin. And even though you perform well on your routine or on your game, pero pagdating ng, or pagkatapos ng laro mo on the second day, kinabukasan, Biglang sumakit naman yung kalamnan mo, even for your muscles and your legs, for example, in long jump, kaya triple jump. So, wala ding uh, parang saisay na nanalo ka on the second day naman, nagkasakit ka. So, next we have here is the warm-up or conditioning exercises allows various body systems to adjust or to increase metabolic demands. So, for metabolic demands, uh, for the word metabolism, first, uh, it also differs with the um, uh, genetic uh, factors na meron ng isang tao. That's why if you're going to compare person A with person B, example, si person A medyo uh, tabain o mabilis lumubo yung katawan niya because he or she has a low, meta uh, sorry, low metabolism. That's why malaki yung pag-adjust or malaki yung epekto ng pagkain niya even for a pasta or even for a, some torts or foods that forms end of carbohydrates and yung person letter B naman is medyo slim siya or medyo skinny or in other terms medyo mataas o malakas yung process ng foods o yung high metabolism naman yung meron sa kanya. Next, in conditioning exercises, the warm-up should be appropriate for the performer and the sports activity involved. Sabi nga natin kanina, kailangan in terms of your activity, uh, that would also go in what kind of sports are you into. For example, you are in swimming. In swimming, you need also to do some sort of exercise that involves car cardiovascular 
okay, the functions or uh, movements and uh, also with the proper training para mapalakas yung baga at saka yung puso because that is the uh, target uh, objectives or target goal when it comes to cardiovascular. At yun din yung kinahailangan na um, gawin mo kapag ikaw ay nagsuswimming because that would be your um, gear o kaya isang way para hindi ka masyadong mapagod at matapos mo yung isang lap, kung isang lap man yung uh, event na tinutukoy mo. Next, um, other than that, in terms of the activity na sabi natin kanina, papasok din siya dun sa forms of sports. For example, your sports is into long jump or triple jump. Okay, ang pinaka uh, target goal natin would be to strengthen the leg muscles, the upper and lower leg. Or uh, in terms of that, you should also focus on the strengthening of the legs. So, pwedeng mga uh, leg lifting or weight lifting na may kinalaman sa leg workout. So, kailan pasok din siya dun sa mismong activity mo. Kasi if uh, your sports is uh, into the water or sa mismong mga aquatics, mga ganun, ang sports mo, for example, you go for swimming, you go for uh, diving, pero ang activities mo naman ay puro land o kaya sa lupa ginagawa. Mabibigla yung katawan natin pag pumasok tayo o um, we enter into a different field areas na hindi naman natin gamay kasi nung practice natin ay ibang area naman yung ating pinag uh, pra or in, in our preparation. That's why we also need to go into that field areas or the specific areas kung saan nagaganap yung isang laro. Next, the warm-up should include some stretching exercises as well as movements related to or similar to the activities about to be performed. So example, sa swimming kanina, kung ang movement ng paa, it's more of the flutter kick, okay, from the left and right foot or leg, ganun din dapat yung exercises mo. So in order for you na hindi mabigla at sustain mo in the word or in forms of endurance, na kailangan mo sustain yung lakas magmula sa finish up to the uh, end line nung isang lap o haba nung pool area, kailangan din ay appropriate ang mga uh, warm-up exercises. In order for you not to uh, uh, mag be shocked o kaya mag hindi maging familiar sa mga ginagawa mo or mga exercises mo, Next, the warm-up should be intense enough to raise body temperature and cause sweating. So ito, um, pinaka-basic lang o mga result lang na nangyayari kapag ikaw ay napapagod. Of course, tumatas yung temperature mo o kaya nagsusweat ka naman o pinagpapawisan because that would be the um, uh, basic results na kung saan nangyayari tuwing warm-up session. Next, warm-up probably should begin to be reduced for 10 minutes to 15 minutes prior to performance and should terminate approximately 5 minutes before performance. So sabi niya, kailangan daw meron tayong 10 minuto or 15 minutes prior to our performance. For example, our game will start at 1, oh sorry, 8 a.m. So mga 7.45, ayan, o kaya 7.40, dun na mag end yung warm-up session mo. For example, Ang um, nag-start ang warm-up mo by 6 o'clock, okay? And then, mag e ng uh, 7.45. So, for some 7.45 to 8 o'clock, 45, 50, 55, 60, you have 15 minutes in uh, preparation dun sa mismong laro mo. That would be uh, good enough for you para prepare din yung katawan at hindi siya pagod kasi nga, nag-consume ka na ng energy during your warm-up session. So, hindi pwedeng ituloy-tuloy natin na walang pahinga before or prior to your performance. So, kailangan i-terminate uh, na natin yun uh, in preparation for your fight. Kasi kung puro warm-up yan, example, um, 7 a.m. down to 8 p.m. Okay? Alas 7 hanggang alas 8 ng gabi yung inyong workout or warm-up. Tapos eksaktong 8 Doon mag start yung mismong laro. What would you expect on your body? Diba? So, 
mawawalan na siya ng, or malilesen ng energy niya, yung sustainability ng katawan niya. Even though that you uh, already uh, work out with your muscles, buhay na yung dugo during the, the warm-up session, uh, going to the finals competition, pero malilesen na yung energy na kailangan mong gamitin all throughout your routine or all throughout your competition. So, kailangan magpahinga bago sumabok sa laro or after the warm-up. So, this is the basic workout outline. We have the warm-up, stretch, aerobic strength training, cool down, and your stretch. Okay. So, for warm-up, we have some activities here na pwede nyong gamitin o gawin sa bahay ninyo. This is, would not, uh, this area or this specific activities would not, would not require you a large area to perform. That's why pwede siya kahit na in our situation nowadays na meron tayong pandemic, pwede siya sa loob ng bahay, pwede siya sa sala, sa kwarto. So number one that we have here is jog in place for 30 to 60 seconds and then rope jumping for 60 seconds. If I'm going to give you a uh, ECS and na ma-maximize or uh, napapahaba niya yung resulta o yung epekto ng aerobic exercises natin or warm obsession, you can do rope jumping. It is because in terms of rope jumping or uh, an aerobic form of exercises, konti lang yung magagamit mo ditong space. Okay? Lalo at pag maliit ka naman, hindi naman sobrang haba nung gagamitin mong rope. Even for um, the materials, ang kailangan mo lang, if you don't have any rope uh, at your home, pwede yung gumamit ng extension wire na hindi nagamit. O kaya sira. Lagyan mo lang siya ng handle on both ends, tapos meron ka ng jumping rope. So that will go for other activities or suggested activities. So next, we have here some stretching activities. You can do this at your home. Number one is your next stretch. So do this for five seconds to two repetitions. Yung iba, they also added the uh, clockwise and and counterclockwise rotation of the head. So yung maganyan, that is your clockwise and uh, counterclockwise rotation when it comes to the head. Next, we have here is your arms and shoulder stretch. So arms and shoulder stretch, um, also with the movements or uh, stretching, especially on the part ng uh, neck. Kasi ito yung medyo laging napapagod o laging naagrabyado, especially if your sport would go into a volleyball. Pag pumalo kang ganyan, ang laging masakit would be sa part ng neck mo, papunta dito sa mag part ng biceps. So, go here for the arms and shoulder stretch. Do this for at least 15 to 30 seconds each arm. So, by bending, okay, straight mo lang yung arms mo sideward, and then you should hold your asiko, then bend mo lang siyang sideward. So, that will go for Arms and shoulder stretch. Next, we have here is your triceps and shoulder stretch. So triceps and shoulder stretch, you can do this for at least 15 to 30 seconds. So talikod ka lang ganyan. And then, ang una mong ibibends, either left or right, pwede rin naman, wala naman tayong um, uh, pagkaiba na um, effect on your arms if you are uh, into your right or even for your left hand, depending na siguro kung inuuna mo ang dominant head mo, which is right or left. So, pasok mo lang siya dito sa uh, likod and then hold this one sa part ng elbow that you go for 30 seconds. So, same with the left arm. Hawakan mo lang sa part ng siko, then uh, we go for 15 to 30 seconds on the left side. Next, we have here is number four, the side stretch. So, this is for at least 10 seconds and three repetitions kasi masyado namang um, uh, madali ang stretch activities natin kaya ginawang tatlo. So, extend mo lang both of your arms, magkatabi, and then bend mo lang siya sideward. Yung ibang tao dito ay lateral flexion kasi palabas. Okay? The word lateral is same with the word, uh, with the uh, term labas. Okay? So this will go for the side bend. Next, the shoulder stretch for at least 10 to 30 seconds. So based on the picture, you should stretch your right arm and then hold mo lang dito sa part ng um, shoulder mo and then that will go for 
the arms and shoulders stretch. That will go for 10 to 30 seconds. Next, we have here is a quadriceps stretch. So for quadriceps, kailangan, ang mas maganda pa nga yung uh, heel ng paa is medyo close or closer with your butt o sa part ng pet. Kailangan fully stretch yung part ng quadriceps uh, muscle. Ang quadriceps muscles ay nasa part ng hita, nasa thigh. Okay, nasa pinakaharap. Number seven is your forearm stretch. So forearm stretch, uh, para ka lang humihingi ng pera, or what you call this one, is your prone. Okay, this one. Your palm is facing upward. This is prone. So, hawakan mo lang dito sa part ng dulo ng daliri, and that is your forearm stretch. So, same with the other side. Next one is your inner thigh stretch. Sa inner thigh stretch naman, Upo ka lang ganyan and then try to um, have that equal position with your left and right foot. Dapat pantay sila. Example, this is your foot. And then um, try to lower down, especially yung sa part ng uh, tuhod natin o yung sa legs natin. And this is uh, other activities or a practice in preparation kung ang sports mo ay... Um, Call this one. Sepak takraw. Okay? Ito yung mga ginagamit na stretch activities or exercises sa mga sports na may kinalaman sa paa na sila yung um, main um, body parts sa kung saan yun parang yung sa, sa basketball. They're uh, training with their hands kasi yun ang nagsushoot. Okay? Sample with the with the uh, pangalan ito. With the uh, Sepak takraw. Okay. Next, number nine is your cut or back stretch. Sa cut or back stretch, of course, ang na-exercise nat natin dito would be yung part ng um, uh, ito, sa likod natin, we have here the backbone, okay, or the spinal cord. So we have here, number one, is the cat stretch. Sa cat stretch naman, kung mapansin nyo, pag kinuha nyo yung pusa, okay? Pag kinuha yung pusa, ang position niyang ganyan ay ito. Okay? Itataas niya yung likod niya so that is your cat stretch. Sa back stretch naman, ibababa nyo ng bahagya yung likod. So if you're going to compare this one, sa first picture, nakababa yung kanyang um, tummy o yung kanyang chan o yung kanyang likod and then nakataas yung ulo niya. Sa my cut stretch naman, nakataas yung likod pero nakababa yung ulo. But same position with the hands and the legs. Number 10 is your hamstring stretch. Sa hamstring stretch naman, ito hindi madalas nagagawa ng ibang tao kasi nga hindi fully, um, hindi naman siya develop. Parang hindi naman siya fully na-exercise o so nagagamit yung part ng hamstring. Ang hamstring kasi ay nandito sa part ng lower leg. So in order for you to do the hamstring stretch, okay, kailangan yung isang leg, naka-flip siya, paloob, malapit dun sa singit, and then, example, left, uh, left leg ito. Left leg yung kanyang inunat on uh, stretch niya, sideways or sideward, and then, uh, one of her arms, so left leg, hawa ka ng left arm, yung mismong toes o daliri ng paa. And then, kailangan hindi tumaas ito. Kasi minsan, pag tinatry natin uh, iabutin yung part ng toes natin na stretch or extended leg, tumataas sa part ng, ng quadriceps natin. So, nangyayari, dito sa part ng tuhod, umaangat yan o tumataas. Pero dapat iwasan yun. Next, the regular stretching program can help lengthen your muscles and restore Youthful activity, number one, to relax your mind and tune up your body. Number two, to preserve range of motion. Number two, three, to maintain flexibility. And number four, to prevent injury during exercises. Remember, your warm-up should be taken seriously. Kasi nga, kung ayaw natin magkaroon ng mas malalang um, abnormalities or mas malalang uh, aksidente na pwede mangyari sa katawan natin, during the play or after the play, kailangan um, maganda at saka applicable lahat ng war-up session na or activities na ginagawa natin. Next, to prepare the muscles for more vigorous activities, especially for uh, mga 
uh, sports na kung saan nare-require na kailangan mas malaki yung playing area. And number two is mas malaki o mas mahaba yung playing time. Pag sinabing mas malaki yung playing area, for example, basketball, ganyan. Compared with table tennis na ang liit lang ng playing area. Ano pa? Football, ayan. Next, for the playing time, kung gaano kahaba ang paglalaro ng isang sports, kailangan i-consider din ang mas maingat na pagpili ng warm-up session at mas masiyasat at mas mabuting uh, pag-develop at pag-usisa sa mga uh, uh, warm-up session or warm activities na ginagawa. Example for playing time, if you're going to compare a playing time of badminton with football o kaya basketball, mas matagal ang basketball compared with uh, table tennis or badminton. Next, to help develop body awareness and lastly, to promote circulations of the blood, especially for the oxygen for your cardiovascular. That's the end of topic number one. Now we go with topic number two, which is aerobic exercises. Okay, your aerobic exercises is on topic uh, number two for midterm. That's why your midterm performance task is to create a routine or pwedeng kumuha sa YouTube, make it an inspiration to uh, use in terms of your video na pang Zumba or aerobic exercise. So this is an activity that uses large muscle groups and can be maintained continuously and it's rhythmic in nature. Kaya papasok yung word na rhythmic or rhythm is that the rhythm is very important kasi nga, siya yung mag-guide sa'yo, okay? Uh, it will serve as a guide in order for you kung kailan ka papasok, kailan ka lalabas sa isang sayaw. That's why kailangan natin ng mga uh, ng musical accompaniment for us to know kung ilang figures ba ang pwede natin gamitin o kunin sa one-minute routine para mabuo ng sample, three minutes routine o kaya five minutes routine. Doon din papasok ang mga signals or guide ninyo. For example, if you're watching street dance, street dance competition, na kung saan, uh, example, papasok yung first batch, puro babae. And then, papasok sa likod o pumunta sa likod, papalit ng costume. And then while are they are change, changing their costume, meron ng papasok na isang uh, grupo ng lalaki naman na kung saan they are using a pala o kaya meron silang mga hawak na palay. So that is the importance of having a rhythm or having a musical background. It's either instrumental man yan or lyrical kapag ikaw ay sumasayaw. Kasi nga, nas nakakadagdag pa yan ng, ng ganda, ng visual appearance ng isang sayaw kapag may music. And this is a type of exercise that overloads the heart and lungs and causes them to work harder than at rest. Remember, in terms of any aerobic exercise or aerobic activity, ang pinaka goal talaga natin dito is to fully stretch the maximum capacity ng ating puso at saka ng ating lungs. Kasi those are the two main organs that we're going to consider in terms of in terms of aerobic exercise. Kailangan malakas both of the heart and lungs para masustain niya kung gaano kabigat, ka-intense, at kahirap yung mismo activity or exercises na ginagawa. Next, the important idea behind aerobic exercise today is to get up and get moving. There are more activities than ever to choose from whether it's a new activity or any old one. Sa aerobic exercise natin or aerobic activity, that would not only focus on the uh, sayaw. Kaya iba minsan, pag sinasabihan sila o may narinig sila o bukas, mag aerobic dance tayo o kaya aerobic exercise, ang mapasok sa isip nila agad-agad ay sasayaw naman, na naman, kikembot na naman, it's more of um, dancing o kaya it's more of a body physique na may kinalaman sa, sa pagsasayaw kasi yun lang ang focus ng aerobics. Pero mali yung description na yun. For us, we have a different types of aerobic exercise. We have the bicycling o pagbibisikleta. Yan na yung nauuso ngayon. If you have some friends or some um, relatives na kung saan they go to Ramon, they go to Ilagan, they go to Santiago na nagbibisikleta sila, that will go some sort of aerobic exercise. Next, fitness walking. A fitness walking ay pinagandang terminologies lang or terms for a jogging or walking exercise. 
Next, jumping rope, running, stair climbing, and swimming. If, and if you're going to ask me, sir, anong pinakamabilis o pinakamagandang uh, types of aerobic dance or aerobic exercise, sorry, na pwede namin gamitin. Na mura lang at wala masyadong uh, ginagamit na equipments or apparatus. Okay. So I would suggest you go for the uh, rope jumping or jumping rope. Sir, bakit? It is because, sabi ko kanina, kung makita ka lang ng uh, duyan ninyo, tapos yung duyan ninyo ay may rope o may tali, pwede na rin yung gamitin ninyo. For the bicycling, kailang, cycling, kailangan mo pang bumili ng bisikleta first. At paano pag uh, you still have a phobia going outside kasi nga pandemic. So you go for rope jumping. It would not require you much large uh, spaces. Pwede mga uh, 5 by 5 meter, okay na rin yun. Tapos medyo mataas yung ceiling ninyo. Depende kung gano'ng kakatangkad. Next, for the running, okay, sa fitness walking, kailangan mo din ng mahabang runway. Okay, ng mahabang kalsada para makatak makatakbo o kaya makapag-jogging. Eh, paano pag uh, you still have a phobia going outside? Number five, running. Okay, stair climbing, swimming. Alangan mo pagawa ka pa ng pool area mo para sa swimming pool mo. Uh, na That would require you a a large amount of money para makapagpagawa lang ng pool area mo. Of course, kailangan mo pa ng tubig. E paano pag uh, poso lang yung source nyo ng water? So, mag-igib ka pa. So, ang pinakakuan dyan, ang pinaka the best or pinaka simple aerobic uh, activities na pwede nyo gamitin is your jumping rope. Next, we have here is your benefits of aerobics. Number one, Increasing maximal oxygen consumption, of course, kasi yun ang major point, uh, target natin, yung sa heart and sa lungs. Improvement in cardiovascular, increased blood supplies to muscles and ability to use oxygen. So in terms of the circulation ng blood, kailangan din may circulation ng oxygen. That's why in some type of person na nagkakaroon ng vertigo o kaya nawawala ng malay o kaya na hilo, hindi lahat ay patungkol sa dugo. Sa dugo. There are some sorts of uh, uh, researches or some sorts of studies na yung flow din ng oxygen ay kailangan or same with the uh, smooth transition or smooth uh, circulation ng dugo natin, parehas lang din dapat sa oxygen. And uh, your oxygen or your blood contains also an oxygen. Next, lowering high rate and blood pressure at any level of submaxial exercises. If you still have or if kung meron kayong mga uh, blood pressure monitoring equipments, yung mga automatic na, yung hindi na stethoscope ba yun, tawag natin doon. So, nalaka, nakalagay doon, meron tayong uh, systolic, diastolic, ganyan doon sa taas niya, sys, SYS, tapos DIAS. Tapos nakalagay din doon yung beats per minute natin kung gaano ka uh, bilis yung pagtibok ng puso natin in one, one minute. So kahit na hindi mo alam gumamit ng uh, stethoscope natin, pwede tayong gumamit ng pwede tayong gumamit ng uh, automatic na blood pressure monitoring. Next, uh, increasing in HDL cholesterol, the good cholesterol. So if uh, in the HDL cholesterol, present yan sa lahat ng protein na uh, uh, meat products natin, pero mas healthy siya sa mga isda at saka sa, um, call this one, sa beef. Okay? Depende na lang kung gaano ka, um, tawag din, gaano kalaki yung kinakain mo o gaano karami yung kinakain mo kasi we have a different um, body physic naman. Yung iba medyo tabain, yung iba naman hindi masyadong kita ang pagtaba sa katawan kahit na sobrang dami ng kinakain because they have the fast metabolism. Next that we have here is the elements of exercise program. Ang elements of exercise program is that they uh, show us kung paano ba dapat ang proseso o tamang proseso ng isang ehersisyo or exercise program para masabi siya na epektibo at nakikita mo yung resulta niya after mong mag-exercise. For example, you go for a week o kaya two weeks of exercise and you uh, still don't notice kung anong pagbabago yung mga nangyari sa katawan mo 
after that two weeks of uh, having an exercise kasi nga baka mali yung mga ginagawa mong ehersisyo. So number one, how frequent should the individual exercise? Pag sinabing frequency, kung gaano kadalas ka nag-exercise sa isang linggo. So ang recommended natin is three to five days per week. Pero depende sa kung um, depende sa lifestyle mo. Okay, for example, ang trabaho mo ay uh, grab driver. Okay, taga-deliver ka ng food magmula umaga hanggang gabi hanggat merong tawag o may order. Ngayon, kung laging pagod ang katawan mo due to your lifestyle or due to your work, okay lang kahit hindi mo sundin yung 3 to 5 days per week. Okay? This only intended for those uh, students or for those people na kung saan ang um, lifestyle nila ay sedentary. Pag sinabi nating sedentary lifestyle, those are forms of lifestyle na kung saan kakain ka lang, matutulog, maliligo, magugas ng plato, okay? then kain tulog, uh, exercise, um, walang exercise, ang sedentary lifestyle. There will um, uh, some sorts of activities na pagpapawis sa kanila tulad ng paglalampaso, uh, paglilinis ng bahay, pero hindi siya. Okay? Hindi siya under a form of what we call exercise. Kung ganun ang, ang lifestyle mo na kung saan tulog, kain, uh, mobile games, and then same routine, ulit-ulit lang, at hindi ka napapagod, hinihingal, pinagpapawisan, and you're not doing uh, some sort of exercise, doon papasok yung tinatawag nating sedentary lifestyle. So, uh, depende sa lifestyle mo kung uh, papasok siya sa 3 to 5 days per week. Yung iba kasi ang trabaho nila from Monday to Friday. So, may dalawang araw na lang, Sunday and Saturdays. But they can also consume Saturday and Sunday for their activities for as long na meron silang ginagawa from weekdays, from Monday to Friday. Next that we have here is your intensity. Sa intensity naman, kung gano'ng katindi o kung gano'ng kahirap yung ginagawa mong ehersisyo sa isang araw. Kasi kahit na you, you're going to exercise for five times a week or uh, seven times a week, okay? Araw-araw ko nag-exercise. Pero yung exercise mo ay uh, pagbubuha, pagbubuhat lang ng 0.50 grams na dumbbells, okay? Ng barbells. Okay, what would you expect in return kung mag uh, ilan o kung gaano ka laki yung epekto niya sa katawan? Of course, sobrang layo at sobrang tagal pa ng epekto o makikita mong epekto kapag hindi naman uh, masyadong intense o masyadong mahirap yung pinagagawa ng katawan. Pero sabi ko kanina, as long as your body can um I call this one, can control or can um still use yung fatigue na ginagawa ng exercise na yun sa katawan mo, kung kaya pa niyang i-handle o i-tolerate, i-tolerate yung ganung klase ng hirap or intensity o haba o one, duration ng mismong exercise, pwede mo pang gawin o dagdagan. Number three that we have here is your duration. So duration naman, we have here at 20 to 60 minutes. So, depende yan sa isang lifestyle, sabi ko nga. Pero if you're going to follow yung 3 to 5 days, sabi niya, kailangan 20 ang minutes ang pinaka minimum, sorry, 20 minutes ang pinaka minimum na pwede mong gamitin sa isang araw in order for you to take your exercise. So, pwede rin isang oras or 60 minutes in one day. Next, the type of exercise. Sa type of exercise, sabi natin kanina, it should be specific. Lalo na, Kung meron kang sports na pinaglalaanan o meron kang sports na gustong pasukan. For example, ang sports mo ay into boxing. Sa boxing, kailangan mo dyan ng overall uh, training. Magmula sa part ng neck, magmula sa part ng biceps mo, triceps, sa part ng legs. Of course, that would be um, uh, so much important kasi nga yung sa proper footwork natin or foot stance natin. Nasa tindig pa lang, makikita na ng kalaban mo na hindi kanya agad mapapatumba. So, kailangan specific yung types ng exercise natin. Hindi kung ano-ano lang. Kasi uh, para din siyang pagkain o para din siyang mga vitamins. Na kung hiyang mo itong vitamins na to, pwedeng hiyang din sa akin o pwede rin hindi. Kasi nga, we have a different forms ng genes even for our body physique.
Sorry. Wala pala akong microphone. Wait lang. So, balik tayo. <laughs> we have here three types of exercise. Number one is the isotonic. Number two is isometric. And number three is aerobic exercise. In those three types of exercises, para ma mabilis tayo, sa aerobic exercise, ang focus natin would be the heart and the lungs. Okay? Sa heart and lungs natin ang pinagtutuunan ng pansin para ma-fully stretch o ma-increase yung maximum capacity niya o yung um, trabaho niya pagdating sa isang sports. Remember, yan yung pinaka-target natin. We're talking about aerobic exercises. Mapalakas yung function at yung capacity ng puso at saka ng baga. While on this isometric and isotonic, on these exercises, ang pinaka uh, um, similarities nila, they would go for the muscles. Again, for isotonic and isometric, ang focus nito ay sa muscles. Wala siyang focus sa kidney, sa heart, sa lungs, sa brain, wala. They're more focused on the muscles. For isometric naman, okay, we'll talk about the difference sa, sa pagkakaiba na tayo. So kung ang similarities nila ay more of the muscles, Ang differences naman nila will go for the number one. Pag sa isotonic, it includes here two movements. Ibig sabihin, you're going to perform two movements or two uh, skills at the same time to gain an isotonic exercises. So we have re contraction and relaxation. Ang pwede nating i-example dito is your push-up. So the push-up, kapag nakataas pa lang yan o hindi ka pa bumababa, that is what they call your relaxation kasi naka-planking uh, ka pa lang, okay, from diagonal position. After that, pagbabaan mo ng kamay mo, okay, yung mukha mo lumalapit na sa floor area at nag-flex na yung part ng biceps mo even for the forearm, that is what they call the contraction. So, ang contraction ay nangyayari sa part ng muscles, ng, sorry, ng bicep muscles mo o kaya ng upper arm. So, that is your contraction and relaxation. It includes two movements which is contraction and relaxation which is um, the isotonic exercises main function. Dito naman tayo sa isometric. Sa isometric naman, sabi natin ang similarities nila ng isotonic ay sa muscle. Sa isometric naman, ang focus naman, ni naman nito ay sa muscles pero ang difference nito sa isotonic is that you should perform a routine or skills in one movement okay, or in one action. Ang pinakakomo natin dyan is basic planking, okay? Yung forearm mo, nandun lang sa mismong floor, and then nakatiklay ka, and then making that horizontal line magmula sa ulo, sa pwet, hanggang sa legs mo, that is a form of isometric. Ito naman, pang matagalan, okay? Holding in a certain position for uh, some time in order to develop a muscle strength, okay? One movement, pero mahaba, okay? O mahaba yung duration, nung isang exercise o isang movement. For isotonic naman, two movements pero short time lang siya. When you go for the push-up, you go for relaxation, straightening ng, um, ng muscle mo. Then after that, you go for contraction. So the contraction will start here from your muscles, the part of the leg muscles, uh, sorry, the neck muscles, including the biceps, triceps, pati sa pai, forearm muscles. Okay. In terms of the principles of exercise, same features or same um, nature ang dinidiscuss nito sa part ng elements of exercise. Itong natapos natin frequency, intensity, duration, and types of exercise. On this area of your principles of exercise, Okay, principles of exercise. We're talking about three principles. We have the overload, the progression, and specificity. Okay, so overload naman, okay, para naka-general form siya or general type na kung saan nakapaloob ang overload sa elements ng exercise, which is frequency, kung gaano ka madalas mag-exercise sa isang linggo, intensity, kung gaano kahirap ang isang exercise, Duration, kung gaano katagal sa isang session ginagawa ang exercise. And lastly, would be the types of exercise or what you call your specificity. 
Sa progression naman, sabi ko kanina, as long as your body can tolerate the pain, your your the fatigue na na nadudulot ng exercise mo o ng activity mo na yon, as long as kaya pa niyang uh, makapaglakad, hindi ka naman nababaldado, hindi ka naman nawawala ng malay kapag naglalakad ka after you take your exercise, um, you should uh, exert more or you can add uh, at least 5 or 10 repetitions for each movements or each skills, pwede pa. Okay? Pero kung hindi na kaya, kung ang borderline mo na lang ay 50 na push-up in a day, at pag nag-55 ka ganyan, pag tayo mo, nahihilo ka na o kaya nababaliktad ka na sa upuan mo, kailangan mong ilesen yon Gawin mong 45 o kaya 40. For as long as your body can tolerate yung pain, yung fatigue, at saka yung um, uh, call this one, yung pagod. Okay? Yung sobrang pagod na naidudulot nung mismong um, exercise na yun sa katawan mo. Importante, kailangan alaga ng katawan. Pero kung ang exercise naman ang nakapagdudulot ng sakit sa katawan, kailangan itigil. Okay? Number three is your specificity. Sa specificity, exercises must be specific in its concern. Sabi ko lang kanina, kung ang gusto mong i-develop sa katawan mo ay more of the leg strength. Okay? You go for a leg workout. Kung gusto mo naman, uh, medyo ma... Ataw Medyo mataba o medyo malaki ang braso mo kasi yung braso mo mas malaki na kesa sa bewang mo o kesa sa leeg mo. So you should work out with your... Um, um, muscles on your part of your arms. Okay? So, depende yan. Pero kidding aside, para siyang ang nature ng, uh, ng nature kasi ng exercises ay parang mga um, parang kilabelo, ganyan, mga medical procedures na may kinalaman sa liposuction, ganyan, magpapatangos ng ilong, ganyan, ganyan ang exercise. So, if you're going to enroll in a fitness club or um, health center, ganyan, or he healthness club, or fitness club, yung kinatawag natin ngayon sa kanila. May mga program kasi silang nakaset kung saan yun mga pwede mong gamitin. Ang nangyayari niyan ay they're going to ask you kung ano yung mga gusto mong ipagawa o gusto mong gawin na i-improve sa katawan mo. Kasi hindi naman sila, ay sir, kailangan mo magpapayat, pero yung sa may part ng arms mo, ipayat naman na tong arms ko para sa akin. So, ang magdetermine niyan ay ikaw kung ano yung gusto mong ipabago at gawin sa sarili mo in order to achieve yung gusto mong uh, makuhang waistline, kung gaano ga, bagustong um, kanipis ang braso mo, kung gaano mo gustong kapalan yung part ng sa biceps mo, sa triceps mo, even for uh, other types of um, modification or changes na pwedeng baguhin sa katawan ng tao. Okay, guidelines in exercising. Number one, there is no one best form of exercise. It depends on what the individual wants to achieve. Of course, sabi ko kanina, kung ang, ang pinaka-goal mo is to um, i-slim mo yung part ng arms mo, you go for the push-up, okay? Kung gusto mo magkaroon ng bato-bato sa abdominal muscle o sa part ng um, chan mo, okay? Mga abs-abs, mga ganyan. Kailangan yun yung workout mo. Next, individuals or individuals should choose exercises which he or she likes and enjoys. Of course. Kasi kung hindi mo gusto ang ginagawa mo, it would take you frustration. At pag na-frustrate ka, hindi mo na itutuloy yung nasimulan mo. Useless. If, even though if you had already purchased o bumili ka ng, ng isang treadmill na ganyan, okay? Yung tinatakbuhan na machine or equipments, tapos hindi mo pala gusto talaga ng ganung forms of exercise, tatampak din yan, yung treadmill na yan, hindi rin magagamit. Next, exercise 30 to 60 minutes regularly, 3 to 5 times a week. Pero sabi ko kanina, it depends on your lifestyle. Next, wear light, comfortable clothes and shoes. Of course, wala namang kinakitang nag-jogging dyan na naka-tuxedo at saka naka-ball gown. Next, exercise either in the morning or late afternoon well, when it's not so hot. So, mapansin nyo ngayon, yung mga nag-exercise sa atin o uh, sa mga um, community ninyo na mas gusto nilang mag-exercise tuwing hapon kasi nga, yun yung uwian nila. Example, ang pasok nila is 7 a.m. Tapos alas 6 pa ang gising nila. So, mag-travel pa sila uh, before they can go into their work by 7 a.m. 
So, naghahabol sila ng oras. So, wala nang time mag-exercise. That's why sineset nila yung kanilang exercise or activities during afternoon. Mga 5 to 7 p.m. Ganyan. So, med- dun din, medyo maganda rin kasi nga, medyo malamig na yung hangin tuwing hapon. Next, if the individual is a beginner, a grad- graduated exercise program starting with light exercises and gradually increasing and intensity should be followed. Sabi na natin kanina, if you are into uh, an exercise, you should take first yung pinaka-basic. Okay? Huwag kang pupunta agad sa, sa middle. Okay? O kaya sa complex agad-agad. Kasi hindi mo naman alam kung proper ba yung ginagawa mo. Kaya basic ka muna. Hindi mo rin alam na uh, gawin na kung tama ba yung execution mo ng skills. O kaya bigla mong uh, pinerform ang activity or exercises do sa mga pro or elite na mga Uh, players or elite na mga um, nag-exercises tulad sa Zumba o kaya ng aerobics exercises. Hindi pwede. Number seven, severe exercises must be avoided unless the individual is young and athletic. For as long as nakaya mo pa, sabi ko nga kanina, ulit-ulitin natin, um, kaya pang itolerate ng katawan yung pain, pwede pang mag- mag-add ng isang set o kaya ng isang um, repetition o isang set sa isang exercises. Pero kung hindi na kaya at medyo pumapalya na yung kasukasuhan mo, medyo sumasakit na yung kalamnan, kalamnan mo, you should eliminate or decrease your exercise. The repetition or the set. Next expression, no pain, no gain has been discredited by experts on fitness. In fact, no one should work up to the point of pain or exhaustion except as part of individual uh, except as part of diagnostic medical test. So, hindi nila pinapayo na yung word na no pain, no gain. Kasi pag meron ng fatigue or extreme fatigue, okay, or too much fatigue na nangyari sa katawan ng tao, we ha- we're going to consider fa- two factors. Number, number one is that mali yung uh, execution or yung paggawa uh, mo dun sa mismong uh, routine or skills, for example you're doing push-up, eh, babae ka. Ang push-up ng babae, kailangan nakatuhod siya. Hindi siya pwedeng naka, parang planking o yung toes mismo yung naka uh, directly touching the uh, surface of the floor. Kailangan nakatuhod. So, mali. Hindi proper yung execution mo. Number two factors that we're going to consider is that mali yung exercise na yun para sa'yo. I mean, that exercise doesn't suit on your um um doon sa idea mo na gusto mong magpa-sexy ng katawan o kaya gusto mong magpanipis ng katawan. I mean, for that exercise, hindi siya bagay. Example, ang gusto mong gawin ay magpanipis ng, ng arm kasi medyo malaki. Pero ang winning workout mo naman ay mga leg. Okay? Leg workout tulad ng you go for running, you go for jumping, mga ganyan. That will go for a leg workout. So, ibig sabihin, hindi na niya nata-target yung gusto mong goal or yung gusto mong ma-achieve sa mismong katawan mo which is pagpapanipis ng arms. So, wala ding epekto. Okay. For this one, aerobic dance for health and fitness. Pakibasa na lang to. There are more of some explanation kung ano mga pwede pang gawin o gamitin. Then we have here Kenneth Cooper. So, Kenneth Cooper is the father of aerobics. Okay, so tinawag siyang father of aerobics. It is because he uh, submit some research or do some research or studies that would help a student or would help a person to do a uh, better ways to do some exercises na kahit wala kang um, gamit o wala kang specific materials na na-utilize o ginagamit mo. Kahit hindi siya ba- de bateria, kahit hindi siya de saksak sa kuryente, kahit hindi siya uh, mahal okay, sa pagbili mo ng isang equipments, as long as that forms of exercise, okay, target yung pinaka-objectives or goal mo. Sabi ko nga nina, yung sa jumping rope, di ba? Nakakita ka lang ng extension wire na sira o kaya hindi mo ginagamit tapos nilagyan mo ng handle on both ends. That will serve as your rope jumping or jumping rope. And rope jumping is a form of aerobic exercise. So, hindi mo na kailangang lumabas pa ng bahay, hindi mo na kailangang bumili pa ng pagkamahal-mahal ng mga 
gamit kasi meron ka ng ginagamit na form of aerobic exercise. So these are the uh, some benefits of your aerobic exercise. Number one, promotes strong and healthy bones. It helps controls life, physical, and emotional stress. And number three, improves intellectual capacity and increase one's productivity. Next, aids in natural way of losing weight and keeping it off, provides significant protection from heart diseases, and promotes better and more effective sleep. So that's the end of topic number two for midterm, which is your aerobic exercise. Now we go with topic number three for your human skeleton. Okay. Sir, bakit pinapag-aralan pa ang bones for PE subject? Because your bones is connected with muscles. And muscles and bones is a part of our, what we call, anatomical movements, which is on the last part of this discussion. The anatomical movements simply use in terms of the biomechanics. Okay, The biomechanics is the study of the movements, especially when you're going to perform a specific um, movements pagdating sa sports. For example, sa table tennis. Okay? Yung table tennis, the proper way is that the movement from your uh, upper arm and forearm should be good enough para pag palo mo ng ping pong ball, ay maganda yung pasok niya papunta sa kabilang banda.
Okay, so let's resume. So just like what I've said, Bones is in uh, connection with the topic for the lesson number four, which is your anatomical movements. That's why we need to um, discuss this one. So bones are made of connective tissue reinforced with calcium and specialized bone cells. So alam naman natin, ang primary function ng bones is to um, protect, okay? To protect our internal organs. So makikita nyo, that's why we have the skull. So you can imagine kung wala tayong skull, di ba? Nakikita nyo na pag sinuntok kang ganyan, of course, diretso agad sa brain mo. Kapag wala hang, um ng ribs. Kung wala hang ribs or protection of the lungs, pag sinuntok ka, papasok agad sa baga mo. O papasok agad sa mismong um, puso yung suntok. So walang magpaprotect sa main organs. So that is the primary function of the bones is to protect your internal organs. Other than that, of course, your skeletal muscle or bones is serve as a framework, okay? Or serve as a frame ng katawan. So you can uh, imagine na kung wala tayong frame, o wala tayong buto, magmula ulo hanggang paa, para tayong mga ahas na, um, ang tawag doon, um, umaakit sa puno, pasok sa school. So that would go some sorts of uh, advantage for human na meron tayong complete or structural bone magmula sa ulo hanggang sa paa. Next, the body is constantly remodeling the skeleton by building up new bone tissue and breaking down old bone tissue as required. Healthy bones need a balanced diet, regular weight bearing exercises, and right levels of various hormones. Yung mga simpleng pagbubuhat lang ng timba na may tubig, okay, tapos mag-iigib ka from dun sa mismong poso ninyo o sa gripo, ilalagay mo siya sa banyo. That is also uh, another helpful activities na pwede niyong gamitin or gawin kapag uh, your arm uh, very much ah, dito? concerned with the bones, especially pag medyo uh, wala kang ginagawang ganyan o pag bubuhat, tapos pag pinagbuhat kang ganyan, parang sumasakit o nagkakalas ka lang sa ng buto mo. So you, that will go some sorts of activities or exercises na pwede mong gamitin o gawin sa bahay ninyo. So we have here, the bones provide a structure for our bodies. The adult human skeleton is made of 206 bones, including the bones of the skull, the spine, the ribs, the arms, and the legs. Bones are made of connective tissue reinforced with calcium and specialized bone cells, and most bones also contain bone marrow where blood cells are made. So that would also be another uh, function of with our bones. Okay, tumutulong siya sa pag um, develop ng mas parami pang dugo na may kinalaman sa RBC and the WBC, the red blood cells, and white blood cells na meron sa uh, circulation ng katawan natin. Next, bones work with muscles and joints to hold our body together and support freedom of movements. Okay? So, ang connect uh, shown ng muscle ay sa buto. This is called the musculoskeletal system. And the skeleton supports and shapes the body, protects delicate internal organs such as the brain, the heart, and the lungs. So, in order for us to uh, go to work, go to school, na wala tayong pangamba na kahit mauntog tayo, okay? kahit na uh, may sumuntok sa atin sa part ng chest natin, hindi agad tatama ang internal organ because we have our bones. And this one, tapos na to, weight bearing exercises, na ulit lang. Okay. So the human skeleton is made of 206 bones, including the bones of the skull, okay, including the jaw bones. So sa jaw, jaw bone, we have two parts of the, the uh, jaw. We have the upper jaw and the lower jaw. So later on, I'll show you some pictures kung bakit siya magkahiwalay. The spine, we have the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacrum, tailbone, and what they call the coccyx or coxi. Chest, the ribs, and the breastbone called the sternum, and then the arms, the shoulder blade, the scapula, collarbone, humerus, radius, and ulna. Okay. For a newborn baby, they have 300 bones present in their body. Kaya lang, pag tumatanda ang tao, meron tayong tinatawag na fusion. Okay? Sabi dyan, as the child grows, some of the cartilage hardens and turns to bone, and some bones fuse together. So, nagdudugtong-dugtong. Kaya pag, uh, pansin nyo, pag may bagong sanggol, o kaya bagong mga pamangkin kayo, o kaya mga kapatid ninyo, ganyan, bagong panganak, inaalagaan yung part ng head. 
Okay? Kasi hindi pa fully developed ang skull. Okay? Hindi pa siya as in uh, matigas or hardened enough o kaya fully developed. Kaya yung iba, uh, yung meron tayong mga uh, tawag doon, mga pang insulto, parang ganun, o mga saying na yung ulo mo parang saging, okay? Taulong dipig, yung ulo mo parang pakak. So, that will go for the, um, call this one, uh, sa formation ng head, okay? Nagkaroon ng, um, parang, tawag doon, uh, deformation ng head. Yung iba, medyo patulis yung head nila. Yung iba naman, dito flat, dito naman medyo pataas. So, parang alien. So, that's why we need to uh, protect, especially those uh, newborn baby kasi hindi pa fully developed talaga lahat ng bones nila. For example, if you still uh, know the history of the, the Pangea, okay, yung sa uh, pagdudugtong-dugtong daw dati o pagdidikit-dikit, ng uh, mga kontinente na meron sa mundo. Then after that, merong paggalaw sa ilalim ng lupa. That's why nagkakahiwala-hiwala yung Asia, yung Africa, America, North America, mga ganyan. So para siyang uh, same with the nature of the Pangea effect na kung saan parang sa skull, pagdudugtong-dugtong or fusion ng bones, kaya, uh, kaya uh, lumiliit yung number of bones na present sa katawan ng tao hanggang siya ay or hanggat siya ay tumatan da. So, fusion ng buto. So, pagdudugtong-dugtong. Okay. Let's um, leave this one. Let's focus on this picture. Okay. So, in this picture, we're talking about the different parts of the or names of the bone. So we we'll start from here. This is the frontal bone. Ang frontal bone natin ay sa part ng noo. Clear lang natin yung picture. Mm, this one. Okay. This one. Okay, so this is the frontal bone sa part ng noo. Nasal bone sa part ng ilong, of course. Nasal, okay, literal. Temporal on both sides. Okay, that's why we have here two temples. Okay, sa my side, sa sentido. Next, the zygomatic. The zygomatic bone is the cheekbone. Okay. Next is the maxilla. Maxilla is the upper jaw, okay? Taas na panga. Or this is what we call the fixed jaw. Kasi pag sinabing fixed jaw, that is connected with the facial bone. The mandible, okay, ito, yung pangalan niya ay nasa gitna, uh, nasa uh, taas na gitna, that is the mandible. The mandible is the lower jaw. Ito naman ang movable jaw. Kung itong sa taas ay fixed jaw or what we call the maxilla, the mandible is the lower jaw. Next, the sternum. The sternum is uh, located here. So this is the stem of the ribs. Okay, dun siya nakakonekta. Next, the ulna and radius. Okay, this one, the humerus. Ang humerus natin ay upper arm. Okay, this one, humerus. In order to locate the ulna and radius, so we have two bones here. May dalawang buto dito. Number one is the ulna, number two is the radius. Kung nasaan yung hinliliit, tapos kahilera niya dyan, yung parang buto na nakausli, na merong uh, parang bilog. Okay? That is what we call ulna. Okay? Kung nasa naman yung ating thumb, nandito yung radius. So magkadikit lang yan o magkasama. Hitin natin. Kung nasa ng pinky finger o yung hinliliit, tapos kahilera niya yung parang bilog na nakausli buto, that is ulna. Sa kabila naman, kung nasaan yung thumb, that is what they call the radius. Okay, so we have two bones here sa forearm. Dito naman, isa sa upper arm. And that is what they call humerus. Ayan o. Humerus, upper arm. Okay, itong pinakataas. Pero dito sa baba, dalawa ang buto dito. Which is your ulna 
and the radius. Okay, next. Sa ilium, pubis, and isium, we will not go deeper with this um, part of the bones kasi nasa pinakaloblob na yun. Nasa singit na, okay? And uh, we can afford to dissect a uh, person para ipakita sa inyo kasi sobrang mahal. So for hip bone, of course, nandun siya sa may likod. So magmula dito, sa part ng pet ninyo, okay? Or sa part ng uh, singit ninyo, Kapasin nyo dyan, yung parang pababa, o V-cut na tinatawag natin. That's why if you saw some athletes na meron silang cut, okay, dito, papunta sa ab abdominal muscle nila, hanggang dito sa likod, that is what we call the hip bone. Okay, so para siyang shell na naka-embrace doon sa part ng likod. Next, we have here is your, uh, the foot. This one is what they call tarsus or tarsal. Again, we will not go deeper with calcaneus, talus, lateral, or cuneiform bone. Kasi nga, nasa loob-loob na yan. Basta ang tawag natin dito ay tarsus or tarsal. Example, this is my foot. Ang tarsus or tarsal, this is the ankle. Okay? Example, paalang ito ah, this is the tarsus or tarsal. Ito naman, magmula dito hanggang dito, Yung likod ng paa, pati yung talampakan ng paa, ang tawag doon ay metatarsal. Tapos, yung daliri ng paa, ang tawag doon ay phalanges of the toes. Ulitin natin. Example, paa ito. On this area, ang tawag dito ay ankle or tarsus or tarsal. Dito naman, magmula dito hanggang dito, yung likod ng paa, okay, pati yung talampakan nyo, that is what we call meta Tarsal. Ang daliri ng paa, ang tawag doon ay phalanges of the toes. Okay. Yung part ng proximal, middle, and distal, we cannot um, fully show you kung nasaan yung part ng proximal, middle, at distal. Kasi nga, maliliit lang yung buto sa uh, parte ng daliri ng paa. Pero sa kamay, mamaya papakita ko kung uh, nasaan yun? Kasi sa part ng kamay, medyo mas malalaki. So, we're done with the mandible. The mandible is the lower jaw. So, on the uh, spinal cord naman, dito sa spinal cord, ang tandaan nyo lang, 7, 12, 5. 7, cervical, 12, thoracic, ayun o, and then 5, lumbar. Sir, para yung 7, 12, 5? Ibig sabihin, sa cervical, 7 siya kasi sa pistong piraso ng buto, ang nagpapatong-patong to make that seven cervical. Mapapansin nyo sa mga, um, uh, call this one, sa mga advertisement na may kinalaman sa buto o kaya sa anli naman ganyan, meron silang building blocks again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? That is seven bones per cervical. After pitong bones sa cervical, mula, mula dito sa may Papunta sa batok, meron tayong 12 thoracic. So, 12 naman siya na ganito, patong-patong. And then, the last one is lumbar. Sa lumbar, limang ganito. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Basta, pitong cervical. After 7, we go for 12 na thoracic, patong-patong ulit. And then, sa pinakababa, lumbar, lima. Kaya mapapansin nyo dito, ayan o, oh, um, First lumbar. So, this is the first lumbar. Okay? First lumbar. Second lumbar. Third lumbar. Fourth lumbar. And fifth lumbar. Kaya, yun yung um, way natin para mas madali natin matutunan ang 7, 12, 5. 7 cervical. Patong-patong. 12 thoracic. And then, 5 lumbar sa baba. Okay? Pero after the lumbar, meron pa tayong tinatawag na sacrum. Yung sacrum, para siyang fixed base. Okay? Para siyang nakaganito na nakahawak sa lumbar, sa thoracic, at saka sa cervical. So, para siyang vase. Siya yung handle para hindi mahulog o hindi ma... Um, call this one. Matumba yung mismong spinal cord natin. And that is what they call your... This one. The sacrum. Ang coccyx naman, or coccy, ito naman yung ating tailbone. Okay? Mapansin nyo yan, pwede nyo kapain sa part ng pet, yung pag -anon. Okay? That is your tailbone. 
sa atin, if you're going to compare that one, para siyang um, buntot ng pusa o ayan ng aso, pero sa kanila kasi muscle yun. Okay? At saka nakalabas ng mismong katawan nila. Sa atin, nasa loob, at hindi siya muscle, kundi isang buto. Okay? Nasa part lang siya ng uh, pagitan ng pwet natin. Next, we have here is the femur. The femur is what we call the longest bone. Siyang pinakamahabang buto kahit na pandak ka, yan yung pinakamahaba mong buto. But this is what we call also your thigh bone. The patella, yung sa part ng tuhod, or what we call the kneecap. And then, sa baba, sa lower leg natin, meron din tayong dalawang buto. Parehas lang sila ng kamay na kanina sabi natin, dito, this, this, this is the humerus or what you call the upper arm, isang buto. Pero pagdating dito, after ng siko, meron na tayong dalawang buto which is what you call the ulna and radius. Parehas lang din sa may paa. Isang buto, the upper leg, the lower leg, dalawang buto. The tibia and the fibula. Uh, tibia is what you call the shin bone. Pag sinabing shin bone, yan yung nakakapa ninyo sa harap ng paa nyo. Yan yung masakit kapag uh, natuhod kayo ng, uh, ng upuan o kaya ng pangalan to, ng kama ninyo o kaya natuhod kayo ng mismong uh, mesa. Yan yung masakit kapag nauuntog yung part ng shin bone or what you call the tibia. The fibula naman, yan yung mas manipis na buto. So parang nakasupport ang fibula kay tibia para hindi sila uh, doon, makumba o hindi sila madislocate. Next, on the tarsus, talus, and calcaneus, nasa part na yan ng heel. Okay? Pag nakatalikod ka, yan yung part ng bukong-bukong in Tagalog na term natin. Next, the parietal. Okay? Para makita nyo yung uh, difference, we go for the... Uh, front and back position. So, this is the frontal. Ang parietal, katapat lang niya, so nasa likod. Okay? Ang occipital naman, mapansin nyo, okay, use your index finger o yung hitotoro niyo. Meron yung, mer um, call this one, Para na sling buto na parang bilog. Same with the ulna. Okay? Yung nakakapan niyo dito, that is the ulna. Pero pagdating sa ulo, that is what we call the occipital bone. Okay, temporal, tapos na yan. On both sides, cervical, vert, uh, vertebra, tapos na rin, ulna and radius. And then, for the ilium, pubis, and ischium, wala tayong problema dyan. O hindi natin papag-aralan kasi nga nasa loob yan. Mas importante, alam mo kung nasa ang hip bone mo. Okay, this one, for the carpal. Okay. Kung sa paa kanina, ang tawag natin dito, dito ay tarsal or tarsus o yung ankel ng paa, ito naman ay metatarsal, yung likod at saka talampakan ng paa at saka phalanges of the toes sa paa. Sa kamay naman, ang tawag natin dito ay carpal. Carpal is the wrist, okay? Wrist bone. Ito naman, metacarpal, ang tawag natin. Letter C naman tayo ngayon instead of letter T, Okay? Carpal, yung likod ng kamay, pati yung pala, that is carpal. And then this one, daliri ng paa, phalanges of the fingers, pero pag sa paa, that is phalanges of the toes. So dito, makikita na natin yung difference ng kung saan nakapwesto ang proximal, middle, at distal. Pag proximal, okay, this one is the base. Ibig sabihin niya yung mas malapit sa palad. Okay, this is the proximal. Ang middle natin, of course, literal, middle, gitna. And then the last one is what you call your distal. Pag sinabing distal, yung pinaka malayo. Okay? Proximal, the base, middle, gitna, distal, dulo. Okay? So that's the um, human skeleton. So that's the end of topic number three for finals, or sorry, for midterm, which is your bones. Now we go with topic number four, which is anatomical movements. The human body is rarely static.
and its component parts, especially in the limbs, are dynamic entities. Anatomical language, therefore, has a special set of terms to denote direction of movement of the various body parts. In the upper limb, flexion denotes a forward movement of the whole limb or any part of the limb. Conversely, backward movement of the limb or any part of the limb is referred to as extension. When the upper limb is moved away from the vertical midline axis of the body, that movement is referred to as abduction and movement of the limb towards the midline axis of the body denotes adduction. In certain joints, there is so much versatility of movement that the individual parts can be moved about several different axes. Such multi-axial joints, best exemplified by the shoulder joint, the shoulder joint is so versatile that not only is it capable of flexion and extension and abduction and adduction, but it is also capable of so-called internal rotation and external rotation. Internal rotation is also known synonymously as medial rotation and external rotation as lateral rotation. Internal rotation and external rotation at the shoulder joint can be demonstrated not only with the arm in the neutral position, i.e. by the side of the body, but also with the arm in abduction. This, with the arm in abduction, is external rotation. And this is internal rotation, a sequential combination of all of these movements in the shoulder joint is referred to as circumduction. Moving distally down the limb, you will observe that the forearm is capable of specialized rotatory movements. An inward rotation of the forearm is referred to as pronation, and returning to the forearm to the original position constitutes supination. If you should have any difficulty in remembering which is supination and which pronation, simply remember the position of the thumb in each of these movements. In supination, thumbs up, S for super. And in pronation, thumbs down, P for pants. Easy. Moving further down the limb, at the wrist joint, the movements possible are a forward movement of the wrist joint, which is flexion, a backward movement of the wrist joint, which is extension, and in addition to flexion and extension, the wrist joint can also be deviated laterally, which is called lateral or radial deviation or abduction, or it can be moved in, which is ulnar deviation or adduction. In the hand, the fingers are capable of flexion, which is a forward bending of the fingers, and straightening of the fingers, which is extension. In addition to flexion and extension, it is also possible to move the fingers apart. This constitutes abduction of the fingers. An abduction of the fingers always relates to the long axis of the metacarpal bone of the middle finger. Thus, movement away from the long axis of the middle finger metacarpal bone constitutes abduction. And when the fingers are brought together, which is to say brought towards the long axis of the middle finger metacarpal bone, that movement constitutes adduction. The thumb is the most flexible and versatile of the digits. It's capable of flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, and also a rotatory movement whereby the pulp of the thumb can be made to face the pulps of the other fingers. And this inward rotatory movement of the thumb is referred to as opposition. The movements at the hip joint are flexion, reflected in the forward movement of the thigh, 
extension reflected in the backward movement of the thigh, abduction when the thigh is moved outward, away from the median axis of the body, and adduction of the hip joint reflected in the inward movement of the thigh. In addition to these four basic movements, the hip joint is also capable of internal rotation and external rotation. And either of these movements at the hip joint can be accomplished either with the limb straight or with the knee flexed. A sequential combination of all of these movements at the hip joint constitutes circumduction of the hip. Moving further down the limb, the knee joint is a modified hinge joint and the principal movements at the knee joint are flexion and extension. Now here, extension of the knee joint is manifest as a forward movement of the leg. And this apparent contradiction is explained by the rotation of the lower limb that happens during embryological development. So that the back of the leg is in fact the flexor surface of the leg and the front of the leg the extensor surface of the leg. Contrast this with the upper limb. Now moving further down the lower limb, we come to the ankle joint, which is a uniaxial or hinge joint. The movements possible at the ankle joint are extension and flexion. Extension at the ankle joint, which is manifest as an upward movement of the foot, is also referred to as dorsiflexion. And flexion of the ankle joint, manifest as a downward movement of the foot, is referred to as plantar flexion. Moving further along, various small joints in the foot allow specialized movements of the foot. An inward rotation of the foot, whereby the medial border of the foot is elevated relative to the lateral border of the foot, is referred to as inversion of the foot. And the opposite movement, wherein the lateral border of the foot is elevated relative to the medial border of the foot, constitutes eversion. And finally, the toes are capable of flexion and extension. And to a considerable extent, although not as impressively as in the hand, the toes are also capable of abduction and adduction. However, in the foot, abduction and adduction of the toes is related to the long axis of the metatarsal of the second toe. Okay, so now we'll go with the um, anatomical movements. So more of this, just like a repetition of the video that you have been watched. So number one is in the angle between two bones. So for the flexion, example with your arms, okay, you go here, the word flexion, okay? So the movement from the forearm going to the upper arm, so decreasing the angle, so from this angle, so parang sa mathematics, from obtuse down to right angle hanggang acute angle, so decreasing the angle, that's what you call a flexion of the arms. You can also use the flexion in terms of your legs. Number two is the extension. So kabay ka siya ng flexion, which is a straightening of the joints or bones. For from this position, you're going to straighten up this one. Okay, so the angle between the two bones increase. So from this acute angle, okay, in the words of or in the uh, terminologies in mathematics for acute angles going to right angles, okay, babalik sa straight line niya or a straight angle, that is what they call extension. That's why kapag bumili ka ng extension, kailangan mahaba kasi nga extension siya. Next we have here is number three and number four for adduction and abduction. 
When I say abduction with the letter B, okay, it's number four, moving a body part away from the midline of the body. Ibig sabihin, this is the midline of the body. So when we say abduct, papalabas. So movement ng kamay natin ay pwede yung ganito. Abduct. Moving away from the midline kasi nakadikit siya sa midline natin which is on this area. So pag ang movement is abduction, it's moving away. Pwede rin naman sa part ng daliri ng kamay. So this is the midline, yung nasa gitna na uh, fingers natin. So when you see abduction, moving away from the midline, so open siya. This is abduct. Pag adduction with double D, which mean magpa-plus or mag add kasi moving towards, pupasok sila sa gitna o magdidikit ulit, ulit natin. Pag abduction, open or moving away kasi lalabas sila. Pag adduction, which means to add towards, papasok sila. Okay? Abduct, open, adduct, close. Next up, we have here hyperflexion. We have a pictures here for hyperextension and hyperflexion. Basta lahat ng hyper, it's more of the extending beyond range of motion. For example, the hyperflexion is flexing beyond ROM. ROM stands for range of motion. So pag hyperflexion, upo ka lang ganyan, pero kailangan yung heel ng paa ang inuupuan ng mismong pwet, and that is what they call hyperflexion. And how about for hyperextension? Mag-extend ka lang. Okay? So kailangan mong tumayo, pero dapat nakalak yung part ng knee. Okay? So parang nakapalikod. So yung um, movement natin we're doing the hyperextension is that medyo nakausli yung pwet natin palabas, tapos nakabress out tayo para magkaroon ng hyperflexion, sorry, hyperextension with the legs. Na kung saan, pag naglakad ka, para siyang walang buto o wala siyang tuhod kasi nga nakalak yung part ng knee. Other examples here for the abduction and adduction. Wait lang, balik tayo. Okay? Abduction, sabi dyan, moving away from the midline, so papalabas. So nakita niyo yung arrow, this is abduction, papalabas. Pag adduction, towards the midline, papasok naman siya. So that is abduction and adduction. Next, we go with number 7 and 8. Number seven should be pronation. Okay, maliling spelling pero kailangan ang uh, pero ang totoong spelling niyan is P R O. Pronation. Pag pronation naman ganito siya. Okay, your palm is facing downward. Ibig sabihin parang nakahiga o nakadapa. Pag supination, your palm is facing upward. Okay, so this is nakahiga. Ulitin natin. Pag pronation, this is number 7, wrong spelling lang, dagdagan nyo ng letter R, it should be P-R-O-N-A-T-I-O-N. Which means your palm is facing downward. So parang nakadapa. Okay, pag nakadapa tayo, your face is facing downward. Pag supination, this one, your palm is facing upward. So parang nakahiga. Kung nakahiga kang ganyan, yung mukha mo ay nakaputok sa mismong isame. So that is supination. Again, this is pronation and this is supination. Did natin. Pronation, supination. Next. Number 9 and 10. Sa so 9 and 10, we also have this one in retraction and protraction. So mag side view lang kayo ganyan. For retraction, moving apart backward, so parang breast out. So nangyayari sa part ng shoulder natin, nagmove siya backward, and our chest is moving forward. So this is retraction. Kabaliktaran niya is protraction, so moving apart of your body. So yung shoulder natin is pupunta sa harap. So yung movement ng likod natin ay magpapa atras o parang kuba ang Definition ng ating protraction. Ulitin natin. Pag retraction, moving backward, so parang naka-breast out. Pag protraction naman, ganito, parang kuba. Next, elevation and depression. Madali lang yan. Pag elevation, taas mo lang, depression, bababa. -ba -ba. Next. Okay, this one. So pronation, ayan, P-R-O dapat ah. Wrong spelling lang tayo doon. Pronation naka 
this one. Palm is facing downward. Supination, palm is facing upward. Yan, retraction, naka-breast out siya. Protraction, naka-huba. Next. Yan, elevation, taas mo lang. Part ng shoulder depression, baba. Rotation. Ang rotation natin, single axis. Pag sinabing single axis, for example, rotation of the head. Okay, this is rotation. Pag circumduction naman, triplanar, ibig sabihin tatlo. That's why kanina, ang, ang focus nyo kanina ay magmula sa ulo, kamay, at saka sa hips. So, ang movement natin doon ay parang ganito. Kung nakakita na kayo ng mga bagong open na mga establishment, ito ay tinawag na human balloon or inflatable balloon. Na mag-start sa hips ang movement, so ganyan, pati kamay, tapos ulo. So, habang umiikot ng ulo, pati na rin ang ang kamay, same with the hips. Pero yung part ng hips, pababa hanggang pamo, ay dapat naka-fix base position. O hindi gumagalaw. So that is circumduction. Sa external and internal rotation naman, ganito siya. So kamay mo ay nandito, nandito sa gilid. Pag in external rotation, of course, palabas. So movement, pag ganyan. So yung part ng shoulder mo, pag nag-side ka hong ganyan, lumalabas. Okay? So that is external. So movement of the shoulder is going outside. So this is external. Pag internal rotation naman, of course, balik mo lang yan. External, internal. Sa lateral flexion, sabi ko kanina, side bend, parehas lang din yan. So this is lateral flexion. Next. Okay, so pwede rin tayo sa part ng hips. Pag internal rotation, ang movement natin ay paloob. Pag external, palabas. Same with the shoulder. Internal, pag ganito, kasi naka-internal ka na, open na. Pag external naman, okay, wait lang. Ito pala. Pag internal, ito, external, labas. Internal, external. Pag sa paa, sample ito, this is internal, this is external. Next, we have here, ayan, lateral rotation, same with this one, lateral flexion. Pag lateral flexion, side bend. Circumduction, yung pinakita ko kanina, while you're rotating your arm, same with your head, tapos pat yung hips. So para sa inflatable balloon. Next, ang number 18 and 19, inversion and reversion. Eversion. Pag inversion naman, turning the sole of the foot inward. So, example, ito yung pamo. Pag inversion, turning of the sole of the foot inward. So, ganyan. Example pa ito, ha? inversion, ganyan ng opening. Pag eversion, ang open eye sa labas. Ulitin natin. Pag inversion, open would be for the inward part of your foot. Example pa ito. So, opening ay paloob. This is inversion. Pag palabas naman, eversion, ganyan. Okay? With your foot ito ah, pwede rin sa kamay. Next example ko lang. Next, number 20 and 21 for dorsi and plantar flexion. For dorsi flexion, that is towards the shin. So, papunta sa part ng shin bone o sa part ng... Uh, lower leg. Pag plantar flexion naman, naka point or downward. Example, this one. For the dorsi and plantar flexion. Okay? Pag dorsi, naka heel. Ibig sabihin, yung heel ng paa ang nasa floor. Pero pag plantar flexion naman, ito ay naka toes o naka tiklay. Okay? Ito. Inversion. Inversion ng opening natin, parang sa paa kanina, example natin ay paloob. This one. Pag eversion sa Labas ang opening. Next. We also have here number 21. I'm sorry. Yeah. 22. Radial deviation and ulnar deviation. Ito naman, basta alam mo kung nasa ng ulna at radial, magawa mo to. So, pag ganyan, kung nasaan ang pinky finger o yung hiniliit, nandun ang ulna. Kung nasan ang thumb, nandun ang radius. So pag 
ulnar deviation, okay? So ang ulna ay nasa labas, so i-stretch natin siya so paloob. So this is ulnar deviation and then pagpalabas this is radial deviation. Read natin. Ulnar paloob, radial palabas. And then the last one is opposition of the thumb. Pag opposition of the thumb because your fingers is the uh, most structured in terms of the movements, pag, pag anatomical movements, ang tawag natin dito ay opposition of thumbs. Ibig sabihin, natatouch niya lahat ng fingers na kasama niya. Okay, that is opposition of the thumb. Next, we go with anatomical position. So this is fine standing erect with the palms and feet facing forward. And this position is the standard reference position in which all positions, movements, and planes are described. So ito ay ginagamit o ginagawa as terms of your anatomical positions para mas makita naman yung mga buto na present sa katawan ng tao. So this is what we call anatomical position. Ibig sabihin, harap ka lang sa, sa audience o kaya sa salamin Tapos yung palm mo, okay, yung palad mo is facing forward, pero nasa gilid. So that is what they call anatomical position. Okay, so this is your anatomical planes. Ang anatomical planes naman, ito ang um, nagbibigay ng daan o nagbibigay ng uh, structure kung paano pwedeng hati-hatiin ang katawan ng tao. Kung napapanood nyo yung mga videos or clips from uh, so o kaya wrong turn, ganito yung kanilang paghati sa katawan ng tao. Number one is the sagittal or mid-sagittal planes. Pag sinabing sagittal or mid-sagittal planes, example on the lock color blue, ito. ang hati ng katawan ay magmula dito sa ulo hanggang sa part ng ari ng tao. So meron tayong left and right part pagdating sa sagittal. Pag hinati mong ganyan o piniyak mo sa part ng ulo, may kanan at may kaliwa. So, sagittal or mid-sagittal planes is divided in two sections from the right and left position. This one. Number two is the frontal or coronal planes. This divide the body into front and back. Sa frontal and coronal planes naman, ito sa kulay pula, ang pag-divide uh, natin o pag-dissect sa katawan ng tao o pag-hati sa katawan ng tao ay dito sa gilid. Okay. So pag hinati mong ganyan, that is what we call the frontal or coronal plane. So meron kang harap at meron din ikaw likod na parte ng katawan ng tao. Para siyang daing na bangus. Pag sa gilid mo, hiniwa, merong harap at likod. Last one that we have here is your transverse or horizontal planes. Pag sinabing transverse or horizontal planes, ang hati naman natin dito ay sa may chan. Okay? O sa gitna ng um, belly or abdominal muscles. So this is the transverse planes which means to say na kapag hinati ang katawan ng tao sa part ng kanyang hips o sa bewang, meron tayong pantaas at meron pang baba. So that's how we're going to divide or this, um, yeah, divide in two sections the body of human body. Number one is transverse. Ang hati ay sa may chan. Pero meron kang taas at merong baba. Sa frontal naman, ang hati ay sa gilid para merong harap at merong likod. Sa sagittal plane, ang hati ay sa gitna para may left and right portions ka ng katawan ng tao. Okay, let's go with the directions. Sa so directions, pag sinabing superior, ibig sabihin sa taas. Pataas. Okay? Kaya if you're in a um, establishment or you are a boss, ngayon, ikaw ang superior kasi yung ikaw yung pinakamataas. So we have here some pictures para hindi kayo maguluhan. Okay. Superior refers to the above. Pag inferior, of course, pababa. So kung panghati ng katawan ay sa may chan, that, that is what we call your transverse planes. Ito, ang superior natin ay pataas, bewang hang papuntang ulo. Inferior, bewang papuntang talampakan. Okay, pababa. Superior, pataas. Inferior, pababa. Anterior naman is sa harap, okay? Sa harap, in front of the other structure. So kung hati ng katawan ay, we go with the frontal planes, okay? This one, ang hati ay dito sa gilid para may harap at likod ka. Ang tawag sa harap ay anterior. Sa likod naman, ang tawag natin doon ay post 
anterior. This one. Anterior and posterior. Next is the medial and lateral. Pag sinabing medial, uh, median, midline, lahat yun ay pertaining to the midsection o sa gitna. Pag lateral naman, it's more of the uh, farther away o palabas siya ng mismong midline o palabas with the word lateral. Superficial sa mismong balat, okay? Sa surface lang siya, sa ibabaw lang. Pero pag deep, of course, mas malalim. Yung mga buto, the veins, the uh, organ, the blood, the arteries, those are forms of deep. Pero pag superficial, first your skin. Yan. Next, ventral. Pag sinabing ventral, yung sa harap, sa may bilbil, sa belly. Pag dorsal, sa likod ng uh, belly o sa part ng hips. Okay? Sa hip bone natin, sa likod, yung masakit kapag may UTI ka. Prone. Same with pronation or this one. Lying face down. Okay? On the supination or supine, lying face up. Pares lang yon ng definition ng prone supine with pronation and supination. Unilateral, of course, with one side. Kapag nag-drawing ka ng bahay, tapos may puno sa kabila, sa right side, that is unilateral. Pero pag nag-drawing ka ng bahay, tapos may dalawang... Um, Bulaklak o may dalawang puno on both sides, that is what we call bilateral. And that's the end of midterms lesson. If you have any questions with your uh, recorded dis discussion for this uh, file, you may uh, have an option to chat me on our GC regarding your concern. So that's the end of your midterms lesson.